Hi guys, and welcome to Muse of Ink. Uh, today is a little bit different. I'm doing my very first voiceover uh, drawing slash illustration, and yeah, and this uh, whole process was inspired by Juicy Ink, a channel that has the most beautiful artwork. Uh, she does a lot of geeky stuff like Sailor Moon and, you know, stuff like that and, and original artwork as well, but her work is so beautiful. And she has done a 30-day sketchbook challenge, and what that entails is that you uh, draw in your sketchbook every day for 30 days and make a video of it. And, you know, that's... it's. I wanted to challenge myself and I said you know what I'm gonna go ahead and buckle down and try this out and see if I can do it and if I can't then you know oh well because I do have a very busy schedule so I might miss a day or two but you know I really really wanted to push myself and try my darndest to get everything done to, to be able to do it and I'm determined to do it to be able to do a drawing video every single day for the next 30 days and so yeah uh, thanks Juicy Ink you have inspired me to do something new um, and plus it's also inspired me to test out my um, my new recording you know uh, software so uh, so yeah I've never made a recording of anything so I've learned something new today, so that's lesson number one. <laughs> so the learning process has already begun. Uh, I decided to draw a mermaid today because it's the month of May, and there's a little thing going around the internet and Instagram and the art community called Mermay. Oh, how clever and adorable is that? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and honor that and draw a mermaid today. So here you go. And I really, really like mermaids. I like anything fantasy, but mermaids especially. Uh, because, you know, they can breathe underwater, they can swim like a fish, and shoot, they are a fish. They're half human, half fish, obviously, and I just really, really like that. I've always wanted to be a mermaid. <laughs> when I was a little girl, uh, I used to pretend that I was a mermaid, and I would swim like a fish underwater, and I, honestly, I was better at doing that than I was swimming like a person. <laughs> I always used to pretend that I have a fin that was like Ariel's, you know, from The Little Mermaid on my legs, and yeah, I, so yeah, I used to pretend that I was a mermaid, and I used to do it in the bathtub too, so that was interesting. <laughs> my mom didn't like that too much though, because uh, more water would end up on the floor than it would in the bathtub. Yeah, she was not happy about that, but she encouraged my imagination, so thanks, Mom. I love you. Oh, I love her hair. I love, I love that color, that teal color. Oh, it's so wonderful. And you're going to notice a lot of mistakes in this video, and that is okay, because you know what? This is not meant to be a finished product. This is just a sketch. It's practice, and that's the beauty of a sketchbook. A sketchbook is meant to be a training area for your drawing, and I like to uh, imagine to compare a sketchbook to a ball field or a basketball court or you know soccer field or just somewhere where or a gym let's say a gym that's even better uh, it's meant to make your hand-eye coordination uh, oh there's mistake number one. Oh gosh <laughs> I was in a hurry because I love drawing hair I just something about the shape and the way it flows and I just really like putting shadows because it makes the drawing pop and I was very impatient and I didn't let the the paint in the hair dry and whenever I started putting shadows it uh, it bled all over the face and just all over the place and just went everywhere so <laughs> I should have been patient and just let it 
and let it let it dry before I started trying to put shadows in. So I decided to move to the tail. Uh, anyway, a sketchbook is not meant to be the final game. It is meant to be a practice area where you can, you know, make mistakes and not worry about, you know, not not worry about affecting a final piece. Uh, it's where you're you're meant to. Uh, practice your hand-eye coordination and to get your hand to uh, make those shapes that you want, that you desire, and, and make them flow and make them continuous. And that's what I love about sketchbooks is that you can make as many mistakes as you want. And you can uh, you can experiment, and you know that's what I was doing here. I was actually experimenting with her hair. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's what a sketchbook is for. It's not meant for a final product. And you know, I, I a lot of new drawers, uh, draw, new drawers, <laughs> oh, gosh, a lot of uh, new artists that are just starting out, they expect, I know that I did when I was just beginning to draw. I remember I had friends who were so much better than I was at drawing and their drawings were incredible. They were so detailed and you know, at the age of, you know, seven or so, <laughs> uh, I had friends that could draw better than I could and, you know, they were just so incredible and I wanted to do that. But every time I drew in my little mini sketchbook, it just didn't look right and I was always so disappointed that my sketches just didn't look right but you know this your sketches aren't supposed to look right in a sketchbook it, it oh gosh right here oh there goes the lips <laughs> oh dear and that's what I mean about patience with watercolor you have to have patience or you're just gonna mess up all over the place. See so, yeah. But oh right here I did not like the way I was planning on putting coral and, you know, just like little fishes in the back and uh I decided against that. I just didn't like that idea, so I went on ahead and just painted a little bit of uh <clears throat> a background wash on it just to make it look like, you know, she's surrounded by water. And there's a few places on here that whenever I add the red trying to make it look purple, it turns out muddy right there. <laughs> it turns out so muddy looking. And thankfully, I'm able to, um, you know, clean it up a bit and just replace it with some blue. But uh, it's just those paints just didn't want to mix right. They, I used the wrong kind of red. I grabbed the wrong red and it turned it into mud. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Prismacolor colored pencils. You know, I, I learned that uh, the paper that I'm using, it's called illustration board and it's a very, very, very thick paper. It's, it's a lot like cardboard, but it's meant for drawing. And I learned that, uh, if you do not have your colored pencils very sharp, it has a grainy effect. And it sometimes looks good, but other times it does not. Like, I do like the way it looks on the ground because that is supposed to be sand, and I did want it to have that grainy effect. But the way I did her lips, oh, those lips. <laughs> I wish I had taken the time to sharpen those pencils and drawn her lips with a little bit more precision and just made them really pop. And I did not do that because apparently I am still a very impatient person when it comes to drawing. <laughs> <clears throat> and right here is my favorite part. Oh, I love drawing hair. I think I've already said that, but I'm going to say it again, darn it, because I do. I love drawing hair. Oh, it's so much fun. I do. And right here, oh, this was inspired by Tori. Oh, those eyelashes. She does some amazing eyelashes on her characters, on her illustrations. And I was inspired to do that for mine. And 
Oh, she's beautiful. I love it. Until here. <laughs> I wish that I had used a blue colored pencil to get those eyebrows in because that does not look good. <laughs> I don't like the way her eyelashes came, her, eye, her eyebrows came in. They just, it just does not look right for this character. Ugh. But this right here, I really like the way her hair came out. And you know what? Like I said before, because I don't like her eyebrows, I, I'm glad that I did it as a sketch. That way I could learn. That way I could experiment, because that was an experiment. It was not meant to be a finished piece, like I said before, and I'm glad that I did it here and not on a finished piece, because that would have ruined the entire piece. I mean, if you look at the whole piece and then, you know, you're like, oh, she's so beautiful, and then it's like, eyebrows! <laughs> It's just not, it just does not look good. Oh, gosh. I, I'm glad that I did that with the tail. I'm glad that I kind of gave it a little bit of texture on the edges, because uh, it, it just, I don't know. I'm just glad that I did that. It doesn't look so flat anymore. And those are supposed to be stones, and I did not leave any white marks, any white spots, negative space to paint those stones in, so it they just look like little silver blobs. Okay, this right here, this was embarrassingly difficult for me, <laughs> because I do like drawing the scales. The scales aren't the tough part. The tough part was deciding in which direction those scales were supposed to go. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, she's going to be swimming forward. Which way on her tail are they supposed to be pointing? And finally I figured it out, but it took me entirely too long. And my excuse was, it was 11 o'clock at night when I was drawing this. I had just gotten the kids to bed. I was tired myself, and oh, it was it was funny. It's funny to me now, but at the time I was like, oh my god, I feel so dumb. Which way are these scales supposed to go? And right here, the uh, I love, 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 love that gel pen. Um, it is a Uniball Signo white gel pen, and it really makes everything pop. I really, really like the way it highlights, and I mean, look at that. I can make bubbles on top of watercolor. Ah, I love it. I just discovered this pen. It's amazing, and yeah, so, and this is the end of the drawing video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my first one, so be gentle. <laughs> Thumbs up, and we will see you later. Bye!